hello friends so in this video we will study about the second week of development that is the formation of the bilaminar germ disk so first of all we need to understand that what is the meaning of the bilaminar germ disk the bilaminar germ disk generally means a disk containing the two lamina means the two surfaces or two layers which are known as the hypoblast and the epiblast so in this video further we will study that how a blastocyst undergoes the implantation and results in the formation of a bilaminar germ disk with hypoblast and the epiblast as in a previous video in the first week of development we ended with a structure called as the blastocyst which consisted of two types of cells the embryoblast which are the inner cell mass whereas the outer cell mass called as the trophoblast in the second diagram you can see on day 7th during the implantation when the blastocyst comes in contact with the uterine epithelium inside there is the presence of the uterine stroma and the blastocyst at that time is called as the implanting blastocyst and the epithelium into which the blastocyst gets implanted is called as the uterine epithelium so what happens on day 8th as the blastocyst gets implanted in the uterine epithelium on the day 7 the trophoblast and the embryoblast gets divided into two two parts each the trophoblast get divided into two parts the cytotrophoblast and the syncytiotrophoblast after entering into the uterine stroma whereas the embryoblast gets divided into two parts the epiblast as well as the hypoblast the space in between the cytotrophoblast and the epiblast cells is called as the amniotic cavity the future amniotic cavity on the ninth day even after the two days of the implantation the blastocyst gets more embedded into the uterine epithelium as a result the cytotrophoblast of the blastocyst continues to grow at a larger pace whereas the syncytiotrophoblast results in the formation of small spaces between them these are known as a trophoblastic lacunae later on the enlarged blood vessels from the uterine epithelium will enter into these lacunae providing the blood circulation or blood supply to the developing embryo moreover it is seen <coughs> that at the ab embryonic pole means at this point the flat cells probably start originating from the hypoblast membrane resulting in the formation of the exosilomic membrane which lines the inner surface of the cytotrophoblast this yellow color this membrane together with the hypoblast this yellow membrane along with the hypoblast cell results in the formation of a cavity this white cavity called as the exosilomic cavity or the primitive yolk sac it is also known as the exosilomic membrane or the huser membrane During the 10th, 11th and 12th day after the implantation, the lacunae which were started growing in the syncytial trophoblast stops growing. The maternal blood vessels comes in contact with the sinusoids and starts filling into them. These structures are known as the maternal sinusoids. At the same time, small trophoblastic cells usually shows small types of deviations which results in the formation of small lacunar spaces between them which have intercommunicating networks you can see these are the intercommunicating networks and these are the syncytium or the empty spaces in between the cytotrophoblast or the trophoblastic cells however as the trophoblast cells continue to erode as they usually starts their growth more and more sinusoids and more and more maternal blood usually comes in between them this is known as the uteroplacental circulation it may be noted that during this time small cells also appears in between the inner layer of the cytotrophoblast this was cytotrophoblast this was syncytial trophoblast 
inner to the cytotrophoblast uh, cytotropho small types of cell comes to appear and outer to the yolk sac these types of cell comes in contact with the inner surface of cytotrophoblast and outer surface of the primitive yolk sac and this usually results in the formation of cavity called as the extra embryonic cavity now the extra embryonic cavity the linings of the extra embryonic cavity which covers the cytotrophoblast is called as the extra embryonic somatic mesoderm whereas the extra embryonic mesoderm which comes outside to that of the primitive yolk sac is called as the extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm it must be noticed that after the implantation the portion from where the blastocyst has entered into the uterine epithelium is covered or is closed by a structure called as fibrin coagulum known as the fibrin coagulum later on this extra embryonic cavity will be known as the chorionic cavity the 13th and the 14th day after the implantation by the 13th day generally the fibrin coagulum has completely covered the uterine epithelium as a result of which due to the continuous entry of the blood from the lacunae the bleeding starts which is known as the implantation bleeding however during the 13th to 14th day the cytotrophoblast starts invaginating into these trophoblastic lacunae in which the maternal blood was allowed to come these are known as the primary villi by the time it is seen that the primitive yolk sac gets separated and the cells usually get separated resulting in the formation of a small type of structure called as the exosilomic cyst whereas this small left part is known as the secondary yolk sac or the definitive yolk sac it may be seen that the remaining portion around the yolk sac is filled up by the chorionic cells which later on results in the formation of the chorionic plate the chorionic plate cell later on comes in front of the secondary yolk sac as well as the two layers of hypoblast and the epiblast resulting in the formation of a connecting stalk which will later develop help in the development of the blood vessels and the stalk will later on result in the formation of the umbilical cord which helps in the transportation of nutrients from the mother towards the fetus in this picture you can see a 13 day embryo histologically in this picture the yolk sac is visible the epiblast is visible the amniotic cavity the primary villi this portion it is visible here this is the chorionic cavity and some somewhere here it will be the exosilomic cyst the extra embryonic somatic mesoderm whereas extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm are not properly visible in this picture so this was all about how the second week of development takes place the formation of the bilaminar germ disc the epiblast as well as the hypoblastic cells later on in further next videos we will study the trilaminar germ disc which involves the ectoderm endoderm and the mesoderm